Alright, so in the previous video, we have already built the YOLO version 3 network and in this one, we'll actually use that network to make predictions on images. And in the final video, that is the next video, we'll use the network to make predictions on video. First of all, let me show you all the new files that I've added. So the first file is image processes. So this contains code for some basic image processing, resizing without changing the aspect ratio and converting from tensor to numpy and vice versa. Then this detect module, this is the one that will actually make detections using DN model and image processing. And then these are two folders. The images will contain the input images and the output of these images the detections that will be made are stored in result so let me just quickly show you the detect module so we have first of all we are importing all the important things that we are going to be using and then this is the parser what it does is basically it will, it will enable command line inputs i have set all these default properties so you don't have to provide these many inputs so as i've already told the directory containing the images is by default set to images and directories to store the results is results and nms threshold is 0.4 Objectness confidence is 0.5. The weight file, the resolution, and the scales. We are we are using detections at three different scales in YOLO, and we'll use all those three here. And then, moving on, we'll convert all of these things to required data types, and then check whether CUDA is available or not. And then the same thing with uh, the coco.names file. We will load that. And then we'll load the network and the weights, and then we'll extract the height that is in the resolution arguments of resolution and then here what this file does is it will check if the image the input provided is a image a list of image or a folder then it will do the necessary operation but if there is no image found then it will return an exception that there was no image all right so if this line line number 88 what it does is there is no directory to store the result it will create a directory then we don't need this time here because i am not I'm gonna print the time it takes and then to build the uh, to build the batches we'll make a map of preprocess image that is a function in the preprocess image preprocesses let me just quickly show you that this is the function preprocess images so we'll pass in all the images all the input images in this function and then uh, we'll actually make a map of that with the input dimensions the resultant batches will contain at zeroth index the output batches the batches that we need that we are going to be performing operations on the second will contain the second index that is at index number one it will contain the original images and at the last index it will contain the input dimensions that is here so there are three there are three candidates here and so there are three indices now finally in the image dimension list contain the dimensions of the image but we'll make predictions at three scales so we basically need to replicate that two more times so that's why here we'll replicate image dimensions two more times the first dimension two more times so that's why this line is uh, used the, this, this function repeat is used so it will contain the dimensions three times so the row will be incremented by three then again if there is CUDA then change it uh, then send it to GPU now check if there are leftovers from the batch size so if batch size is not divisible by the image dimension list then set leftover to one because there is some leftover and then i is equal to zero we'll see what it does write is false which means that we have not written any output and object obj's will store the de detected objects now let's uh, quickly iterate for batches in image batches again if there is cuda send it to batches this was this line print was just for debugging it while i was implementing this network now without tracking gradients make a prediction and then use this function write results which is in util function so write results will basically return the detections otherwise if there if there have been no detections it will return an integer that is zero so let's see what it does it will first use confidence mask confidence then it will mask all the detections that have less confidence than the given threshold then it will check whether there are any remaining non-zero predictions and then finally it will use all the bounding box predictions to calculate the top left and bottom right corner of the bounding box and then here we will iterate through the batch max confidence class and the max confidence score and then we'll just append that concatenate that to the batch and then again we'll get rid of the zero entries here 
a lot of entries will become zero here once we have confidence we have multiplied with the confidence mask so we'll just get rid of all those values to here and then and here we'll try to get all the classes all the unique classes that have been detected and then finally using that we'll perform nms non max suppression that is a, a standard algorithm that i won't be going into detail how it works but i have already explained what it does so i've given you the general idea in the first video if you don't remember just go ahead and watch that video okay so what we will we'll do is it will make sure no objects are detected multiple times no same objects are detected multiple times all right so it will use bounding box iou and all of those those things and finally when we are done with this the prediction that we'll have will uh, either contain the real outputs or uh, it will contain zero which means uh, there have been no detections made so right here if type of prediction is integer then it will just increment i and will continue i basically means that we have seen this batch now if not if not then we'll in, uh, add the current batch number to the prediction so this is the syntax for adding the current batch number i multiplied by the batch size so it will tell you the exact the exact batch number here batch size is generally one we are using one batch size so it doesn't matter all right now if not right which means that we have not written anything yet so the output will be equal to prediction and then we'll set right it equal is equal to one so that next time we don't have to perform this operation so if right is equal to one next time we will not change the output we'll just append that we'll just concatenate it so output and predictions are concatenated now here in this loop we'll enumerate the image list and what we'll do is we'll basically separate out the objects that have been detected the classes that have been detected and we'll just print them out print the objects that have been detected and finally here we'll increment i by 1 here also we have incremented i by 1 because there have been no detections made so we will continue and this uh, program won't reach here so that's why we are again incrementing it in case the objects have been detected and then cura.synchronize is basically handling all the under the hood stuff you don't have to know what it does but it just stabilizes the CUDA operations and try output which means if there have been no detections made just print out no detections have been made and what here uh, what what it does here is in all of these lines what they do is they basically make sure that in the beginning of this program we had scaled down the images uh, in the util folder or in the image processes folder right here so we custom we have this custom resize a uh, function and in the util also we have a lot of functions that actually uh, resize the images so we have resized the images keeping the aspect ratio the same but here we need to again upscale the image we basically need to get the original image to draw the bounding boxes so what it does here is it will take the resized image and it will just upscale by multiplying and dividing by scaling factor and performing mathematical operations that i won't go into detail and we'll get the original image and here we'll load uh, a palette file that contains all the color codes so it is a pickle file so you need a uh, pickle library to do that it's easy to install pickle just use pip pip install pickle and you'll get that so uh, we load all the colors here colors will be used to draw the bounding box ious and this function write what this does is it uses opencv to make bounding boxes so it will take x the batches and the results so it will basically draw the bounding box so so first of, uh, so this uh, in this function first of all we'll extract these a bounding box parameters top left and bottom right attributes and then we'll extract the image from the result the label the color randomly and then we'll draw the rectangle here and then again we'll draw the rectangle to uh, for the text that we are labeling and then finally we'll return that so now we'll use this function and use a lambda function to link that function with each and every image with each and every batches so the syntax is lambda x right that function and then x the image batch and the original image and then the output we'll just concatenate them together and this uh, lambda has to be applied so what we'll do is we'll just apply this to image list i am list and finally we have what whatever we have returned here we'll write that so we'll apply this lambda to i am list and then we'll make sure that we refer to this output uh, args.result to store the output here then finally we'll link 
cb2 dot i am right with the dead names and the original images so now we're finally on running this it will use lambdas on original image and on the batches to perform this operation and it will store the result in the args dot result file that is named result and it will just finally we will just empty the cache the cuda cache that's it so let me just it, it might seem a bit complex because i have not mentioned two things here in detail the working of open cv functions beyond the scope of this uh, video series because you need to know the syntax of this rectangle which basically takes few functions but it is pretty clear what these functions do so the rectangle functions will create a rectangle it will draw a rectangle in the image and put text will put a text somewhere in the screen so th that is clear but i have not mentioned in detail because that was beyond the scope of this video series so this is the code file just go over it again and see if you have understood it properly if you have not then try to debug it try to you know just get the intuition but with that said let's just try to run this so let me just quickly run python detect dot py now first let me just show you the input images that we are going to be using so this is a picture of a, a lot of cars this is a living room a dog and a bicycle a bird a giraffe horses a man and a dog train so you get the idea right so these are all the images so let me just quickly run this let's see what happens okay so it is printing out the object detected in the each batch that's all right so let's just go to the output the result folder and let's just see so yeah we have here directions made it has successfully detected all the cars here okay so this is a very high resolution image so that's why the reductions are not visible because resolution is really high but if you zoom in you'll see that it has detected chair sofa and sofa here again so yeah, it is working on high resolution image as well so now here we have detected dog bicycle and a truck a bird a giraffe and a zebra okay i don't know what's happening here okay now horses a person and a dog a train traffic light car truck chair clock person person dog and a horse as you can see this network is successfully detecting the images so we have built our real time object detector on images using yolo version 3 now in the next video we'll actually try to implement the same thing on videos we are going to be using some movie trailers or something like that i don't know yet but uh, we'll see that so if I'd like you to go ahead and play with this network. Try to change stuff. Try to break stuff, and you know, try to get, uh, try to find a fix on your own, and just play around with different images and see on what images this network is not performing so well. So just try to uh, print out the outputs on different images, and just play with it. And that's it for this video. And in the next video, we'll actually work with videos, and it's going to be really amazing. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.